Today in algebra class, we're taking a look at lesson 39, using the distributive property to simplify rational expressions. Let's take a look at our new concepts for today. A rational expression is an expression with a variable in the denominator. Rational expressions can be treated like fractions. As with fractions, the denominator cannot equal zero. Therefore, any value of zero that makes the denominator equal to zero is not permitted. So because there's a variable in the denominator, we have to make sure that denominator cannot equal zero that variable, if it is in the denominator, cannot have some type of factor or solution when you simplify what that variable is to equal zero, because that would be undefined with a zero in the denominator. Variables also stand for known real numbers. So all the properties that apply to real numbers also apply to rational expressions. The distributive property can be used to simplify rational expressions. And you know the distributive property. You've learned that when you have something that is multiplied with parentheses, you multiply what's on the outside by what's on the inside. Take a look at a couple of our example problems. The first is distributing over addition. So you can see inside the parentheses here, I've got an addition problem that is in fraction form, and I've got a variable in the denominator, so it's a rational expression. Because this x squared, y squared is on the outside of the parentheses, it's multiplied by everything on the inside of the parentheses. So it's multiplied by x squared y, and it's multiplied by 3y cubed m. The most important part of our lesson today is how you go about visualizing this and I like to draw the arrows just like it shows you here in the solution portion. And then the next most important step is to rewrite the equation by rewriting what you're distributing twice. See here, they have x squared y squared in this first multiple, and they're multiplying by the first factor, x squared y. They rewrote it as a separate multiplication problem inside of parentheses. Then they distributed the x squared y squared to the second term in your equation, 3y cubed over m, and they just rewrote that as a second factor or second multiplication that's happening with what was being distributed. So now you have the first term and second term multiplied by what was on the outside of that set of parentheses to begin with. Now you're simplifying the expression. Like simply, when you're multiplying fractions, you multiply numerator by numerator and denominator by denominator. So don't get overwhelmed or um, too consumed right now on what this all looks like because it looks so complicated. But you're actually just putting together these two pieces in the top in the numerator. You're putting together these two pieces in the denominator. Then you repeat that process with the second term or with however many terms there are. So here, you've got x squared times x squared. You know that the bases are the same, that therefore you're going to use the product property of exponents and just add these up. So your only math here, people like to get really consumed with, wow, this looks really complex, is 2 plus 2. I know that you're capable of doing that. It's just a matter of writing this out correctly. Again, this is the most important step, visualizing how this distribution happens and then writing it out properly with those new sets of terms that are being multiplied. Now you're doing 2 plus 2 and 2 plus 1. So x squared plus x squared is x to the fourth because 2 plus 2 is 4. y squared and y is 2 plus 1, which is 3. And I've rewritten that as a acceptable or put together piece with those two terms. Now I go to the second term. It's x squared 3y cubed. There are no like terms, so guess what? I write that whole thing together in order like this. And then the denominator, I've got y squared times m. So I wrote y squared times m. Scrunch those things together. Basically, all you did here was get rid of this multiplication symbol and draw this as one big fraction, which is a way in which things might happen if you don't have like terms when you're multiplying. You write that all out, and what you need to identify each time, because a rational expression, again, has that variable in the denominator, is that that variable cannot equal zero. Because if it would equal zero, that would make this undefined. So y is in the denominator, I say y can't equal zero. m is in the denominator, I say m can't equal zero. That's because they're all being multiplied. If anything's being multiplied by zero, obviously you know that it equals zero. That's just distributing over addition. You just write that addition symbol here between those two terms, and it stays between those two terms. Not much changes. Here's distributing over subtraction. You're going to see the same set of skills come into play. What's on the outside multiplied by what's on the inside. You'll see here they took m and z multiplied by apx mk. Then they took m and z multiplied by negative 2m to the 4th p to the 4th. Here's how they wrote that out. m a p x z m k, like I just put those two things together. Then when they distributed to the second term, it's m and z multiplied by 2m to the 4th p to the 4th. Now, you can put these things together by saying, well, what's the common terms in the numerator here? m a p x, nothing. What is the common term here? Z, M, and K. Well, because I have an M in the numerator and an M in the denominator, those two things can cancel to simplify this first term in the expression. 
So I have APX over ZK because the M's canceled. In the second term, I've got M times 2M to the fourth. Now M and M to the fourth would be 1 plus 4 because of my product property. So I've got M to the fifth. Z's in the denominator. And I have no other like terms to cancel from numerator to denominator or to do my product property when I'm multiplying across. So I now have my simplified expression. I keep the subtraction symbol in the middle. And then I go, go back and identify where I can't have 0. Z can't equal 0, K can't equal 0, and M can't equal 0. Now, M is said to not equal 0 because M was in the denominator at one point. Okay, So all three of those are written out as cannot equal 0. It says here, although that n is not in the denominator of the final expression, there is one in the denominator of the original expression. So you have to make sure that m can't equal 0 at the beginning of that expression either. When simplifying an expression with negative exponents, the final expression should not have negative exponents. So we're kind of reviewing our exponent rules here along with what is the distributive property. Our product property of exponents says that you multiply when, or you, when they're multiplied, you add those things together. The negative exponents we learned are actually positive, but they're written in the opposite place that they're found when they're in a fraction. So a negative exponent in the numerator is positive in the denominator. A negative exponent in the denominator is positive in the numerator. We've got to learn how to just simply flip those and write them as reciprocals because that's how we're going to apply to simplify these expressions. Here you have, again, numbers on the outside, b to the third over d to the negative third, multiplied by what's on the inside. They distribute and they rewrote the entire equation. Here's, again, the most important part. They didn't draw the arrows this time, but they did rewrite everything just like this so that you can see that b to the third was multiplied by 2b squared right here. d to the negative third was multiplied by d. B to the third was multiplied by f to the negative third d, and b to the third was d to the third was multiplied by d to the negative third b in this expression. Now you can go about your product property of exponents and put things together that are the same. So in this example, you've got b to the third b to the second. That's b to the fifth. Here you've got b to the third f negative third d. Nothing changes, right? In the denominator, I've got d to the negative third and d. So this is negative three and one. If you added those two together because it's the product property of exponents, you'd have d to the negative second. Negative 3 plus 1 is negative 2. Here you'd have d to the negative third times b. Nothing is uh, the same, so it can be simplified. So I have this final answer here, but I'm not done yet because, again, I can't have negative exponents. So I take wherever those negatives are, and guess what? I flip them to the other position inside of the expression so that they are positive. Here you've got d... 2b to the fifth, d to the negative second. Negative second comes up to the top, and I've got 2b to the fifth, d squared in the numerator. There is no denominator anymore because it's over 1. In the second term here, I've got b to the third, f to the negative third, d. f to the negative third's got to go down. d to the negative third's got to come up. And then I've got a cancellation between both of the b's because I've got one in the numerator and one in the denominator. So you'll see here that b to the third and b is like 3 minus 1 because it's the quotient property of exponents. Whenever they're divided, it's just like subtracting, so it becomes b to the second. d to the negative third becomes d to the positive third up in the numerator, so now I've got d to the third plus d to the first, which is d to the fourth, and then f to the negative third goes down to the numerator and becomes positive, right? In example b, You've got m to the negative first over m multiplied by the first term, multiplied by the second term. Here's how they write that out. And then they write it as the entire two sets of problems with the first term and then the second term. As they go about simplifying this, you're then looking for where those cancellation opportunities are, numerator to denominator, and where the product property can be applied, where things can get put together like they, because they're like terms. So here you've got n minus 1 mx over mc, n to the negative third, p to the negative fifth. Your m's are going to cancel here. Nothing else is the same in either one of those two. Here you've got n to the negative first times 5n to the negative fourth. Both of those two are n to the n to the something. So you've got the common denominator. You're going to raise that to a power, which is going to be negative 1 and negative 4. Same sign sum. Add those up, negative 5. And you've got negative p to the fifth over m. Nothing changes. Here, you're then going to simplify by writing all of the negatives in the opposite locations. So this negative 3 comes up to the top. I've got now positive 3 
This negative 1 goes down to the bottom, positive 1. So 3 over 1 is 2. That's how they get this n squared, because 3 minus 1 is 2. Then you've got p to the negative 5th in the denominator. Comes up to the top. Guess what? It's p to the 5th. The c stays where it is. The x stays where it is. And you've got this simplified expression with no negative exponents. In the second term, you've got n to the negative 5th here and p to the negative 5th. Well, both of those are negative. They go down in the denominator, become positive. 5 over m n to the 5th, p to the 5th. You still have to indicate what variables that are in the denominator cannot equal zero. So at any point in the expression, wherever something was in the denominator, it cannot equal zero. So m can equal zero, c can equal zero, n can equal zero, and p can equal zero. Example four says distributing over multiple operations. What happens if you have more than two terms? Well, nothing changes. It just adds an extra step to your work, which I'm sure that you're capable of doing. You just have to, have to write it out correctly in the beginning. Again, the most important step, draw the arrow, Draw the arrow, draw the arrow, and then rewrite this first term one, two, three times, and then write the first term here, second term here, third term here, and you are now able to break these down to one problem at a time. So you've got AB times AXB. Put the A's together. A times A is A squared. Put the B's together. B times B is B squared. And X over C squared C, C to the third a b 2 b x i like to put the leading coefficient 2 out in front a is next b times b is b squared and x over c squared there's nothing that changes in the denominator and in the third term i've got a b times 4 so 4 is my leading coefficient times a b over c to the second times c to the second put those two together c to the fourth c can equal 0 because c is in the denominator and i've now applied this to what would be a three term expression just simply adds a distributive step, and I can do the same exact skills. In letter B, you've got the same thing, but now with negative exponents. Let's apply it again. They first wrote it out as the entire expression, and then they wrote the multiplier or the distributive property here being multiplied by the first term, second term, and third term. Most important part, this is what you're going to need to take your time with, is to write this out with these three different multipliers. Then break these down one problem at a time. Here you've got g to the 0, x, h squared. Well, g to the 0 equals 1, so that's going to cancel. x, h squared, d doesn't have anything else that needs to be simplified, so you have that as your final answer. In the second term, you've got 2, h to the 5th, x to the negative 1, g squared over d to the 2nd. You've got x to the negative 1 is going to come down to the denominator, and you're done. Lastly, you've got 9, g squared, h over d to the negative 1st. That negative 1 is going to come up into the denominator, and you have a positive d here as your final answer. So you can see how those things were written out as they're being multiplied. When it was d squared times d to the negative third, you got d to the negative first. When it was d squared here, it was d squared. When it was d to the negative second, d to the second, and d to the negative first, you're doing your product property here, so it becomes 2 minus 1 is 1. And then from there, you can simplify this portion of the expression. Okay, again, writing in where you have numbers in, or variables in the denominator, write them as they cannot equal zero, and you've got this complete. I hope that helps with your homework problems. Go ahead and take care of those practice problems that are circled on your Lesson 39 practice problems page. God's blessings.